Thank you. I hope I don't fall off this. Um, right, firstly, can I say a huge thank you? And can you all show your appreciation to Mel, Janice, Paul, and everyone else at Speak for organising today's event? Thank you, guys. It's amazing, it really is. I'd also like to thank you, um, Speak volunteers. Um, more importantly, I think, than organising today's event is for bearing witness on a weekly basis come rain or shine, to the vile and relentless harming and killing of animals at Oxford University. Your diligence and commitment to the unseen animals and to raising awareness of what is happening, not only here at Oxford University, but beyond, is truly humbling. So thank you. I'd just like to ask everyone now, could you raise your hands if you know of or have heard of Felix? Felix, for those of you don't know, who don't know, was a beautiful macaque. He was inquisitive and intelligent. In the wild, had he been lucky enough to live there, he would have played with other members of his troop foraged widely for food and manipulated fruits and leaves, evaluating them before deciding whether or not they were suitable for eating. To do this, he would use his intelligence, his memory and his hands. These were the very attributes that made him into who he was, an individual. And these are the things that led him and other macaques like him to become victim of the animal researchers here at Oxford University. Felix was seven years old when he was featured on a TV program in 2006 about the terrible animal experiments being conducted here at Oxford. We know a lot about Felix, partly thanks to the TV program, but mainly because Speak highlighted his terrible life, the suffering he would endure, and also his shocking and untimely death. They spoke his name, they cried over his plight, and they spent months trying to save him. They swore that Felix would be seen as a symbol for all the animals in laboratories, the nameless, the faceless, and the voiceless. Whilst we know a lot about Felix and the terrible suffering he would have endured, he was un unusual in that he was apparently given a name by his tormentor. Unlike millions of other animals in laboratories, he was not just a number tattooed on his chest, or the number on a chip in his back, or the number clipped to a piece of paper on the side of a cage or a tank. We know what happened to Felix, so his story must serve as a reminder for us about the horrors facing countless animals each day of each week of each month of each year. Last year, 3.7 million animals were experimented on in British laboratories. The experiments would have included such horrors. Just think of this, imagine this being you, as being burned, poisoned, gassed, electrocuted, force-fed, injected with cancer cells, and being surgically mutilated. And when that torment is over, most of the animals are killed. The ways animals are killed are equally horrific as the way they live. They can be given overdoses, suffocated, have their necks broken, or be bled to death. And if you're an unborn animal, you could also be frozen or just minced up. Once confirmed as dead, these poor animals have their bodies frozen, sliced up, the tissues are analysed, all in the futile pursuit of knowledge. Few, if any, of these animals have names. If they do, we will never know them. What happens to them is shrouded in secrecy. Scant information is made public, and if it is, it's very highly sanitised. We're told that primates like Felix are trained to cooperate with, by having their water restricted. It's not restricted, it's water deprivation. Animals are being made to work for a drop of water. The researchers tell us that animals are sacrificed, not murdered. They're exsanguinated, not bled to death. 
the clinical language used cannot hide the violence. Animal Aid recently launched a campaign called Indefensible, which is focusing on warfare experiments. And in common with all experiments, the animals who are victims to warfare experiments are subject to the stresses and deprivations of life in a laboratory. Not only are they suffering, but there are secrecy laws which prevent information about animal experiments ever being made public. Additionally, as animal aid are finding out, the MOD do not want to part with the information that they have about warfare experiments. Animal Aid, under the Freedom of Information Act, has requested information from Port and Down. Port and Down, as you will probably all know, is a secret government laboratory where ex animal experiments are conducted. Other establishments have supplied this information in 20 working days. Port and Down took almost six months. They've cited national security and international relations as the reasons that they will not provide us with the information. Animal Aid has pushed and pushed and have now finally received some of the information we, we requested. And we'll be sharing this with the public soon so that everybody knows what happens in their laboratories. So that the animals are not forgotten. We will not be deterred from shining a light on what happens to the animals used in warfare experiments. In fact, all experiments. <laughs> The animals endure in warfare experiments is truly horrific. Our recent exposés have highlighted guinea pigs who were exposed to the toxic nerve agent VX. These beautiful animals were exposed to the VX and then observed to see if they displayed symptoms such as writhing and gasping. Guinea pigs only breathe through their mouths when they're in extreme distress. The guinea pigs were also permanently tethered to a pump so that blood could be taken and substances given to them whenever the researchers wanted. Those that didn't die during the experiment were then killed. Animal Aid's latest expose has, dealed ha has detailed how marmosets were exposed to Ebola. We know from human cases of Ebola that it can cause horrific suffering, bleeding from the eyes, noses and other orifices. The justification for exposing marmosets to, to Ebola was that the disease may be weaponized. These tiny marmoset monkeys were taken from the breeding colony at Porton Down and used in experiments. Their suffering is truly horrific. It was described by the animal researchers in this manner. Overt signs of infection included a hunched posture, unkempt fur, altered respiration, subdued nature and a reluctance to move, eat or drink. External hemorrhaging from the genitals was observed in four animals. It's 2019 this year. It's 60 years since Russell and Birch established the three R's. It's 40 years since World Day for Animals in Laboratories was founded. And quite frankly, we shouldn't have to be here protesting about something that is so archaic, raising public awareness about something that is so flawed and scientifically inadequate. But we will, because it's morally right that we speak out for the animals whether it's doing weekly demonstrations about vivisection in your area, doing information stalls, handing out leaflets, or asking your MP to add their voice to yours. All of these things are necessary, all of them count, and all of them are so important and vital to making animal experiments a thing of the past, consigned to history where they belong. Thank you.